Hello and welcome to the review of Open Heavens Daily Devotional for Thursday, 24th June 2021. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for this beautiful day that we are in. We thank you for the privilege to listen to your word and to speak your word. Be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we listen to this review, we ask, O oh God, that your presence would be with us and you teach us all that we need to know. Help us to make the necessary changes in the name of Jesus and let your name be glorified perpetually in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Our topic today is, my peace, I live with you. My peace, I live with you. Our Bible text is from John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, 27, I read from the New King James Version. Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Our memory verse is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Philippians 4, 7. And it reads, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. I pray that this will be our reality. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace helps us to achieve a lot of things in our lives, things that are tangible, things that we can see, things that we can hold on to. When there is chaos in any atmosphere, it is difficult or near impossible to achieve anything whether chaos in our minds or chaos in our family or chaos even in the atmosphere if it is very windy or stormy it will be near impossible to achieve tangible things and this shows that for us to have peace there needs to be uh, for us to have tangible things excuse me there needs to be peace around us and it means that we need to ensure that we're keeping chaotic circumstances away from us so that our peace will be guaranteed our peace will be guaranteed a bible text tells us that jesus speaking said he leaves his peace with us and he says he has given us this peace, not like the world gives peace, not from the understanding of the world, but our hearts should not be troubled. We shouldn't be afraid by virtue of the peace that we have received from him, by virtue of the peace he has given to us. So it means that as children of God, we have a guaranteed peace with Christ and we need to know how to explore the things we need to do, the factors that we need to consider to guarantee that the peace that Christ has given with us, the peace that Christ has left with us, is not eluding us. I pray that this will be our reality in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want us to consider Philippians chapter 4. Our memory verse came from verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, our memory verse came from verse 7, but I want us to backtrack a bit and go to verse 4. Verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. When you look at verse 7, our memory verse, it started with and. It says, and the peace of God. This means that the preceding verses to this memory verse is important to the conclusion that that memory verse brings us. And that's why we're backtracking to verse 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. So the first factor that I want us to consider today that guarantees our peace is for us to have a heart that rejoices in the Lord. And he didn't say rejoice in the Lord only one time, rejoice in the Lord because you got something good going for you. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And then it says, again, I will say rejoice. So when you are done rejoicing in the Lord, in what you believe or, you know, what you have judged to be always, the next thing to do is to rejoice again. So we can say factor one is rejoice. 
And factor two is rejoice again. No matter the circumstances you're facing, no matter what is happening within and outside you, rejoice in the Lord. I pray that God will help us to live a life of one who perpetually rejoices in him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Another thing that I want us to consider that helps us to keep our peace intact is verse 5 of Philippians chapter 4 that says, Let your gentleness be known to all men. This is an intentional way of being gentle in such a way that everyone who knows us knows that we are gentle. When you approach situations with gentleness, when you approach people with gentleness, when everyone around knows that you are gentle, then peace will be what will be around you. Peace is what you will experience. Nobody will be necessarily looking for trouble. Yes, there could be people who might be you know, trying to ruffle you intentionally, trying to say awful things to you. But your gentleness will be known to all men and to in most situations and to most people you're interacting with, your peace will be intact. This will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Going forward to the fourth factor I want us to consider. The first one is rejoice. The second one is rejoice again. The third one is being gentle, letting our gentleness be known to all men. The fourth one is not being anxious. Verse 6 of Philippians chapter 4 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, which in this case is already our fifth point. Don't be anxious, but pray for your peace to be intact, for your peace in Christ to be guaranteed, to remain in your life, to be in your fore, to be that which you're experiencing daily, to be your reality. You need to keep anxiety away. And then you need to pray. It says in everything by prayer and supplication. In everything by prayer and supplication. Petition in heaven. Reminding God of his word, of his promises is important. And quickly to the sixth, we go to the next thing to do. It says with thanksgiving. Give thanks in all situations. Do not look at the circumstance around you. Don't look at what you have or what you don't. Don't look at what you're expecting to get that is not yet here. Give thanks with thanksgiving. No matter what it is you're asking God for, do it with thanksgiving. Do it with a grateful heart. Do it with rejoicing in your heart. Then it now goes to verse 7. That says, and the peace of God. So for all to have the peace of God that passes all understanding, being manifest and being expressed in our lives, we need to have done all of these preceding ones. It is important also for us to know that all of this rejoicing in the Lord and giving thanks and praying and all of that is not standing on its own. God gives peace to those who are his a memory verse again, Philippians 4, 7. Says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So if you don't know Christ Jesus, if you're not a born again child of God, if you've not given your life and your heart to Christ, you cannot be a partaker of this peace that Jesus Christ gives. He said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that, are, that labor and are ever laden, and I will give you rest. It's not possible for you to have peace and rest that comes with Christ when you don't have Christ in your life. The peace belongs to him. The peace belongs to God. And I want you to search your heart today. If you're not yet a child of God, it's a good day to give your heart to him. If you have done it once before, but you backslidden, it's a good day for you to say, Father, I'm coming back home. And as you come, God is ready to receive you with open arms and to give you peace. And nothing will take that peace away from you ever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, I want us to emphasize on having a heart of gratitude and giving thanks in all situations. And this comes largely with contentment. If you're not content with that which you have, with the situation you find yourself, with the blessings that you receive, then it will become almost impossible to live a life of thanksgiving. 
it will become almost impossible for you to be grateful in the things or the situations that you are going through and all of those kind of things i need you to know that the bible says first Timothy 6 it says godliness with contentment is great gain meaning with godliness and contentment you gain a whole lot of things and peace is included you will not be greedy you will not be going around and seeking you know knowledge or wealth or wrong things from the you know, uh, wrong places you will not be you know taking away your heart will not be taken away to serve other gods or to serve mammon or to serve money and this is important as a child of god that you need to be content with that which god has given to you and i pray that all of us will have a heart that shows and exudes with contentment all the days of our lives in jesus mighty name amen i want us to pray and say father please let your peace guide my heart let your peace that passes all understanding let it rule in my heart let it rule in my mind let it rule in my affairs in the name of jesus i don't want to leave the the standard of peace that the world leaves but i want to experience your peace in my life no matter the storm you're facing today no matter the difficult situation you seem to be in i want you to say father i receive your peace i live in your peace your peace that passes all understanding guards my heart it keeps my heart it keeps my mind my mind doesn't go to and fro all around not being stayed on you but by your peace i receive strength to be stayed on you i receive strength to stay with your word i receive st strength to stay with your principles in the name of jesus christ thank you father for answered prayers for we've prayed in jesus mighty name Amen.